Hey guys, um, Hannah Smith here again, your Australian Federation Party candidate for the seat of Page. And um, look, I just want to share with you an idea that's been bobbing around in my brain for a long time because uh, I get a little bit ticked off with the ballot paper and I think we can do a better job with it. So, so this is really about electoral reform and I think there's a few fronts we could do some electoral reform uh, here. Yes, we have a pretty good system, but it could be better. And, um, you know, I really think that we should tackle some of that so that we can put a little bit more power in the hands of the voter in terms of um, having a true voice at the polling booth uh, and not getting funneled into supporting either of the major parties kind of by default, which is what currently happens is that they kind of structure it so that it embeds the two-party system and the, the two-party power structure. And I don't believe that that's what our constitution intended, nor do I believe that that's actually what's good for Australians. So uh, here's an idea I've been carrying around for a few years now. I'd like to reform the ballot paper itself. Now, before I go much further, I want to say I believe in compulsory voting. I really, really do. I, I believe that, you know, we know Australians have died for the idea of democracy and freedom and defended that for us. Uh, we lost the Anzacs for that reason. And um, so we've got to honour what they fought and died for in terms of our democratic freedom and our democratic rights. So you will vote. You will turn up on polling day and you will walk in there and you'll make a choice. Um, there are millions of people around the world who don't have the opportunity to participate in a free and fair election and truly influence the leadership team of their nation. So that's a pretty precious uh, um, opportunity that Australians have and we should always respect it and are always uh, value it and use it effectively. Your vote is precious. It's more valuable than anything else you own. Do not take it cheaply. So back to that pesky ballot paper. Uh, so what I wanna do is redesign the ballot paper. And I believe that when you go into the polling booth and look at that ballot paper, the top box should be, I don't care. And that's a valid answer. Why should your vote go anywhere else to any politician if you genuinely don't care? Now, you might not care for the fact that you feel so safe and secure in our leadership team and even if our opposition um, got control, you still think they're generally on the right track and you're comfortable with everything and you can just coast along and you don't necessarily want to do the research or put the thinking into it to make a informed vote. So fair enough. Uh, also, you might also be someone who says, I don't care because you've given up and you've surrendered to the idea that your vote doesn't make a difference. Now that's not true. And I'd encourage people to vote differently, but I certainly, that's something I've felt in the past. And I think we've got a lot of disengaged voters in Australia and there are informal voters who um, donkey vote or put an informal vote in so that it doesn't get counted, or they just surrender to the status quo and are resentful voters. Like, they do it properly, but there's nothing there that they want to vote for. Um, so they kind of come out feeling like they've been robbed, really. Um, so, yeah, that's the first box. I don't care. The second box is I don't know. So you can walk in there, tick I don't know and walk out. And, and it can be valid once again for two reasons. One is you haven't done the research enough. You don't understand the candidates. You don't understand the policies. So you don't know who you choose. So tick I don't know and walk out. Or you don't actually understand our process and how to use, say, preferences effectively and um, assess and do the research effectively. And that then is a signal for us as a government or a leadership team to make sure that our electorate is getting the education they need. So um, I see that as a valuable kind of signal to have as well. And then the last box, not the last box, but the third box from the top 
should be uh, none of the below. And what we're sort of indicating there is that of the candidates that have stood for selection, there's none of them there that represent my needs, my interests, my views. Um, so I'd rather not vote for any of them. Uh, try again, please. So, and then obviously you have the candidates below and you could do an optional preferential vote on that. So if there's only one candidate you truly identify with and you think would be the best person for the job, you put a one in, in the box beside them and you're done. Or maybe you think there's two that are pretty good options and you might go one, two, and you're done. Uh, so, and okay, so so what's the value of the top two boxes or, or top three boxes that I don't care, I don't know, and none of the below? If we hit a threshold on those of say 35% or more, so 35% or more of voters in electorate tick those top three boxes, then that hits a trigger to annul that election and call it invalid on that day. So we say, righto, too many voters uh, haven't given us an engaged and directive with their vote. So uh, we're going to set a new date for three months time. We'll come back to the polls then. You've got three months to get your shit together, get them engaged, get them educated, or find some new candidates. And I don't think we'd have to pull those triggers too often before we start to change the shape and accountability of both voter engagement, but also our candidates and making sure we had good candidates stepping forward and communicating clearly with the electorate about what they represent. So anyway, if you've got some thoughts or feedback on that little idea of mine, I'd love to hear them. All right, good night.